Richard Spur on LBC. Text 84850. Uh, good morning. We're talking about immigration because this weekend alone more than a thousand migrants arrived in the UK after crossing the English Channel. Morning, Danny. Morning. Morning, morning, morning Richard. Morning. Um, yeah. Now, this, this, this again is, is getting out of control because people are conflating the, the illegalities of what they're doing. So if we break the law in the UK, okay, um, we go to prison. If we make any type of money from that, okay, with the Proceeds of Crime Act, and, and it gets taken away. But these people seem to be coming here illegally, so they've broken the law to start with. And then it's the inequality of, of, of that from the British people, because they're getting free housing, they're getting free health care, they haven't had to go through the energy crisis that the British people have had to do. So they're getting, they're getting um, all, the, all of this for breaking the law. It, it doesn't make sense. We should be strong on this and saying, well, if you do come here and you do break the law and you do enter in this way, then we will put you into a, a special, specially funded prison. It won't be a, a, a hotel. It, it will be a prison. If you, if you need people to, to pick the fields or, or whatever like that, that you're talking about the fruit pickers and that, mm. they can go on right there until they, until they want to go back to whatever country they're saying that they came from. Do you feel how how would that work in practice? And I mean, you know, is is a prison an appropriate place for you know, let's say, uh, children who have no say in the matter that they've been trafficked over to Britain? No, a hundred percent. It's a different situation with the children. The children, uh, the, the parents are there. They should be identified, and then they should be uh, took to to court for child abuse. And the children should be taken away from the parents. Any 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 parent that puts a child in that type of danger. Okay, on on the high seas, doesn't deserve to have their children anymore. So we'll take them away, we'll put them in care, and then one of the the, the British people who want to look after small children will will be happy to take one. And then obviously they can integrate within society growing up. So no, not for the children. Obviously not going for. But, I mean, that, prison, but, 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 but that puts a massive pressure on on a the judicial system if you're going to have to be trying people that don't even aren't even residents, and b on the on the care system uh, if if the children need to be taken to care. You know, we, we, we well, I, I'm I'm not sure that we have the resources or the money or the people or the time to actually to to, to do that. Um, you know, and, and there, we yeah, we so do we do have a duty of care for children that that, that uh, come over here in small boats. Yeah, the care system, obviously I'm from Maysburg, so I'm in the area, so the care yeah. system in this area is already obliterated, okay? The judiciary system in this area is already obliterated to the fact that, you know, for, for certain sexual offences, women can't phone 999 anymore, it's 101 that comes straight from Maystone. So we're already in this situation, so we need to stop it. And the only way we can stop it is not put them in the hotels and, and, and make, we can make, we made a Nightingale Hospital in a matter of weeks. OK, so we can make a Nightingale's style prison to hold these people in uh, until we can figure out what country they want to go do, back do, to. Do or they, what country. But Danny, do they deserve to go to prison? Yes, because they've broken the law. They've, they, they've invaded the country illegally. OK, they have no documentation. And obviously, like, like um, uh, was it Fifi, the last caller? Yeah. Like she said, these are, young, these are young men, predominantly young men, OK, who are throwing away the documentation. And when they are getting into hotels, we're seeing a lot of crimes go up in them areas. And when they're not, it's like a, in, in this Welsh town. So there's, there's, there's a voice of Wales. They reported on these Welsh towns that were having 700 people into um, these small areas. Mm. Now, that can't, that can't happen because you're changing the demographics overnight. All these things are, are happening and it's a change in the evolving system. And the only way we can stop it is if we put a, 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 real, a real deterrent. And then that real deterrent is saying, if you do come here without going through any of the places, and obviously they're saying there's no legal routes. There's always a legal route. You can always find, like you said, you can always find a consulate somewhere. There's one in France. You can find one in Italy. You can find one in Germany. You can go there and you can, you can process your stuff there. If you want to get on a boat and you want to come over here that way, then sorry, we're not going to accept that. And that's not acceptable. And we're going to put you into a, a, a okay, into a detention camp. And Which how do we, and, and final question to you, how do we get that message to people? Um, how, how do we get the message over to, 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 to people who aren't, uh, you know, don't, don't read British newspapers and don't consume British media? Uh, what, what's, mm. what, what should be the, mean, the means of doing that? 
Well, you know, first of all, we wish he can, can go on his favourite TikTok and Twitter and put it across. But predominantly, we need to spend a good couple of million pounds into leafleting. And then we can fly over Calais. We can, we can have an English pilot to go over there, probably in a Spitfire. And it can all drop down in that way. And then obviously, um, they'll be able to get it that way. It worked during the war. You know, that type, of, that type of, of, of thing, you know, it worked during the war. It worked during the work. So we can we can leave it in that way. But you know, once Furthermore, everyone we, knows right and wrong. Everyone everyone knows right and wrong. You know, everyone knows you need a passport to get into a country. So it is, we should have to be be teaching them this way. You know, they do know what they're doing. Okay. Yeah. You you you, you feel that there that there are more who have you know really do do realise what's at stake here rather than just having been duped by by traffickers. Um, yeah. And I, I just think, though, just just a final thing before the news. Uh, you know, once the, by the time they've got to Calais, or by the time they've got to to you know somewhere somewhere in the north of France, they're gonna mm. they're gonna complete the journey, aren't they? They're gonna want to. They're gonna. They're not gonna get that far and then suddenly turn back. Yeah, no, they're they're, they're gonna go and do the whole complete journey. But this is the thing, it's, it's in stages. Uh, I've heard from a lot of the, the traffic people who have said that they, they pay up until France and then they pay from France into England. So it's two different journeys that they're making, two different payments. But my, my biggest concern is is who's paying, who's giving them this money? Because I've worked my whole life, I'm 42 years old, okay? And I can't get £5,000 just to go on a nice holiday in the Bahamas. So who's paying these people in these countries who are war-torn and, you know, their inflation must be incredible in these war-torn countries, but yet they can have £5,000 or more to get from their country to here. It, it, there's, there's more people playing this game than, than, than me and you realise. Thanks, Danny. Good talking to you. A uh, quick message here from Mark in Hertfordshire, uh, texting 84850. Richard, my great...